In this video, we're going to learn about the comparison operators in Python. So the comparison operators allow us to compare values to see if they're equal or not equal, or to see if they're greater than or less than each other. So for example, if we have a variable x set to 10 and a variable y set to 5, we could compare x and y to see if they're equal to each other using the equality operator. So x double equals y, we'll check to see if x equals y. We call this here an expression, and the expression is going to evaluate to either true if x is equal to y, or false if x does not equal y. True and false are what are called Boolean values. We could print out the result of this expression being evaluated. In this case here with x set to 10 and y set to 5, we expect the expression to evaluate to false. We can save our program and then try it out. And we do get false. Now there are several other comparison operators. For example, the inequality operator will check to see if two values do not equal each other. So for example, we could have here x exclamation mark equals y. This here is the inequality operator. It's going to produce the value true if x doesn't equal y or the value false if x does equal y. So we can save this and now we'll actually get true because x doesn't equal y. If y was 10 and we saved our program and ran it, now we get false because x does equal y. There is also less than and greater than operators. So for example here, we could have x less than y. This will check to see if x is less than y. If x was five, this would be true. So if we save our program and run it, we'll get true. If x was 12, and we saved our program and ran it, we would get false because X is now greater than Y. And there is also a greater than operator. So for example, here we could have X greater than Y. This will check to see if X is greater than Y. So if we save our program and try it out, we'll get true because 12 is greater than 10. If X was four and we save our program again and run it, we get false because four is less than 10. There's also operators for greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. So for example, we could have X greater than or equal to Y. If X was 10, we'll actually get true here because X is equal to Y. So we could save this and run it and we'll get true. So the greater than or equal to operator is going to produce the value true if the left operand is greater than or equal to the right operand. The less than or equal to operator works the same way in that it's going to produce the value true if the left operand is less than or equal to the right operand. So again, with X set to 10 and Y set to 10, X and Y are equal. So if we save this and run it, we'll get true because 10 is less than or equal to 10. Now in Python, we can actually chain multiple comparison operators together. So for example, let's say we have a variable Z set to some value. Maybe the value is set based on user input. And let's say that we want to check to see if the value is within some range. We could actually have this five is less than or equal to Z and Z is less than or equal to 10. And this expression is going to evaluate to true if five is less than or equal to Z and Z is less than or equal to 10. So we can check two things at once. We'll actually output this. We'll call the print function to output the result. We can save this and run a program. And in this case, we'll get true because Z is equal to eight and eight is between five and 10. But if say Z was 12, Z would no longer be less than or equal to 10. So if we save this and run it, will now get false. The comparison operators are not limited to numeric types. We can also use them to compare things like strings. So for example, we could have word one is equal to hello and word two is equal to hello. And then we could compare word one and two to see if they're equal. So we could have print word one is equal to word two. And if we save this and run it, we'll get true because the strings are the exact same. The equality operator is going to be case sensitive when comparing strings. So for example, if we had lowercase h here, 
for the word hello in this word to variable, and we saved our program and ran it, we'd get false here because the strings are not exactly equal anymore. So we can use these comparison operators with types other than numeric types. We should be a little bit careful when using the comparison operators with floating point values or what are called floats. So for example, let's compare 0.8 to 0.1 plus 0.7. We'll have print 0.8 is equal to, and then we'll have 0.1 plus 0.7. So 0.1 plus 0.7 should give us 0.8, which should be equal to 0.8. But if we save this and run it, we get false. So floating point values are numbers that include decimal places like 0.1 and 0.7. They're stored in a different way than int values, which are numbers like negative two or five that do not have decimal places. When floating point numbers are stored, what's often stored is not the exact number itself but an approximation of the number that's very close to the actual number. Exactly why that's the case is kind of beyond the scope of this video. It would involve a discussion of computer hardware, but it is important that we're aware of this issue when using the comparison operators with float type values. Because even though it may seem unusual, in a situation like this, 0.1 plus 0.7 doesn't actually give us exactly 0.8, and that's why we get the behavior that we do. Comparison operators are very often used as part of the condition of a control structure. So for example, we could have an if statement with a condition A is greater than B. And this if statement will execute a block of code if the value A is greater than the value B. So we could have here print A greater than B. And if A was five and B was two, and we saved our program and ran it, we'd get a is greater than b as output because five is greater than two. If a was one and we saved our program and ran it, we'd get nothing because the if statement condition is false and so that block of code is not going to execute. So this is the type of situation where we see comparison operators used very often. And this is how we can use comparison operators in Python. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.